Hey everyone, I'm Mike from theparkprodigy.com and on today's video I'm going to break down 20 of the best tips and tricks when visiting Disney's Hollywood Studios. So if you are in the process of planning that Walt Disney World trip and you're trying to just be as prepared as possible, just be sure to stick around until the end of this video. As always, I'm very excited, so let's go get started. Thank you guys again so, so much for checking out this video. Like I said, I am about to break down the 20 best or over the 20 best of the best tips and tricks for visiting Disney's Hollywood Studios. And if you are in the process of planning a Walt Disney World trip and you're a little overwhelmed and you do need some additional help, just be sure to fill out the questionnaire below and me and my team will be sure to send you a custom Disney World vacation package and we will take care of all of the, essentially get rid of all the stress of planning a Walt Disney World trip. And if you want more videos like this, just be sure to hit that subscribe button as I have a lot more similar videos coming out in the coming weeks. So the first tip and trick is actually gonna be kind of right here where you enter the park. And this is specifically really for guests who are staying at a Walt Disney World hotel and they're trying to take advantage of the early entry. Now, early entry is essentially you get an extra half hour at you know each of the four Disney World parks. You get to pick which park you wanna take advantage on on each day. But what some guests might not know is that Disney actually has like different kind of guidelines essentially as when they let you in to each park. So here at Disney's Hollywood Studios, like I said, you can get in an extra half hour early, but there's a benefit to showing up even earlier than that. And what sometimes Disney will do is they'll let guests into the park a half hour before that early entry is even going to start. So my recommendation is always to get here at least 45 minutes to an hour before then, especially if you're trying to rope drop your favorite rides and get as much done as possible. Now, about a half hour before you know that early entry, Disney will start letting guests in. And essentially at that point in time, you will essentially scan your Disney World hotel key. Now, that doesn't mean that the rides will be open, but you will be able to essentially kind of show you, come into the park. And then from there, you can pretty much go and line up and you know, in the land that you want to go on, wherever your rides are going. Most people come to Rope Drop, Slinky Dog Dash, or Star Wars Rise of the Resistance, and I might talk about which one is the best one to Rope Drop in a little bit. So for the next tip and trick, I'm doing it on the fly as I walk down the main entryway here at Disney's Hollywood Studios. So some guests might not realize that Disney Hollywood Studios is connected to the Disney Skyliner, which makes this a really, really convenient park to visit based on which hotel you decide to stay at. So there are certain Disney World hotels connected to the Disney Skyliner. So if you want easy convenience, if you're spending a lot of time at Hollywood Studios or Epcot, I would suggest going and taking a look at those hotels. Now, the important other thing to keep in mind here, the tip and trick is be mindful of the weather because the Skyliner is up in the air and if there's lighting in the area, they could potentially you know, kind of put a temporary halt on the Skyliner service. So in that case, you just want to be mindful of that if you're rope dropping, sorry, if you're park hopping or going back to your hotel, let's say in the afternoon for a break, the Skyliner might be down in that situation. You just have to keep an eye out for the Disney World buses, which will take you to your hotel. Or even if you're park hopping over to Epcot and you're trying to use the Skyliner, a tip within the tip, keep that in mind. Or if you're going from Epcot over to Hollywood Studio, just be mindful. If you're planning to use the Disney Skyliner and there's you know rain or lightning in the area, ask a cast member like, hey, is the Skyliner up and running before you walk over to it if you're park hopping or anything like that. The next tip and trick on the list is essentially always have a game plan when coming to Disney's Hollywood Studios. Now this is really a great tip and trick no matter which Disney World Park that you visit. But I think that Disney's Hollywood Studios is actually very deceitfully kind of, it's deceitful at just how difficult it is to get everything done. I think this is the second hardest park behind Magic Kingdom Park. And the reason why it's so difficult to really game plan is because, I don't know if you guys could see here, but that's actually the Beauty and the Beast. Um, show. We have the Hollywood Tower of Terror Hotel and then there's Fantasmic, which is behind right over there back there. But because of the mix of attractions and also shows here in this park, it is difficult to get through everything, especially if you're trying to see and do everything. And this park also does have some heavy hitters, right? With the Tower of Terror being one of them, Rise of the Resistance, Slinky Dog Dash, right? I came with my family and we did just shows, just shows, barely any rides. We stopped to eat pretty much between every show. But when my uncle showed me the list of like everything he wanted to do, I was like, I don't, I don't know what we're going to do like the rest of the day. We could probably, you know, get on everything or see every show be, before one o'clock. But 
between the, the breaks to snack and eat, we almost didn't make it to Fantasmic at night. So again, it's deceitful. Always have a game plan when coming to this park. Okay, so tying into my tip and trick about how Hollywood Studios can be a very, very difficult park to visit if you're trying to get onto all of the rides and really see all the shows. But on the flip side, I would say if you have older guests and your family, you will be delighted to know that I do think it is one of the best parks in order to come with older guests, right? So when I come with my family, my uncles, and aunts, we typically always come to Disney's Hollywood Studios because of the shows, it's not as, you know, you can get so much done throughout the day. More, a lot more done, let's say, if you have family members who don't go on to rides at this park just because of how, like, show-driven it is. And the live shows are really, really great, especially with Little Mermaid coming back very, very soon as of the time of the recording of this video anyway. You might be back if you're watching this in the future, but it's just a great park all around for, you know, families with older guests. So this next tip and trick might be a little controversial, but I would say it's always better to rope drop essentially this ride right behind me, which is Slinky Dog Dash, as opposed to Star Wars Rise of the Resistance. And we actually did a complete video on that. And in that video, we came to the conclusion that it was better to always rope drop Slinky Dog because there was a significant you know, savings compared to, let's say, coming and getting on the line later in the day. But also you'll see in the next tip and trick, I'll kind of explain why we picked this ride over Rise of the Resistance. So one of the other reasons why we typically always recommend to rope drop Slinky Dog Dash is Star Wars Rise of the Resistance right behind me does have a habit of going down at this point in time. And again, it can kind of ruin your entire day if you get here early to rope drop this ride and then the ride is down. On the flip side, be very mindful because one of the popular tips and tricks is to kind of, you know, not rope drop this, come back later at night. You know, you kind of like you're, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't because one of the things that can happen if you come back at night and let's say the ride goes down and it's you know within a couple hours of park closing, they could potentially you know, shut the ride down for the remainder of the night. So you do have to be mindful of that, and you do you know just kind of need to pick and choose your battles. But my opinion is, from a wait time standpoint, as long as Rise is not down later in the night, you will save time um, as opposed to waiting on Slinky Dog Dash later in the night. So another important tip and trick that really ties into having you know a game plan or just being able to tackle this park you know based on some of the wait time data that we're looking at we do feel like the slowest day here at disney's hollywood studios is going to be wednesday so keep that in mind we actually did a complete video video on you know avoiding the busiest days here at walt disney world so you could definitely be sure to go check out that video but specifically for this park what i took away from looking at the data is hollywood studios is typically the slowest on a wednesday so for this next tip and trick, it is keep in mind that sometimes Disney will have Fantasmic twice a night. So it is based on you know park hours and the time of year that you come down to visit. But it throws some families off that might not know that there is a later showing to Fantasmic. And I would really say if you do have older you know, kids, try to take advantage of that. And if they do have a later showing, stay later and go and see that show of Fantasmic. Now, the next tip and trick is one of the benefits of doing this is that so many families will try to go to Fantasmic or to that first show that when that show is going on, you can take advantage of shorter wait times on some of the rides. So again, if you're doing the show is in the middle of the day and you're trying to get on everything, these are just some of the ways that you'll get that much more done in your day. See the second viewing of Fantasmic, hit up some of the most popular rides right during the first viewing and you're going to be that much more ahead of the game. So this is a tip and trick I wasn't expecting to have on the video, but in the back, like near the exit of Tower of Terror, there's actually a lot of seating area. So there's benches and there's also just like, you know, kind of uh, just, um, and just places for families to sit or for you to get off your feet. It's kind of hidden back there. So if you do have someone who's coming onto Tower of Terror and you're like, okay, well we have to wait, but all the seating in front of Tower of Terror is taken, go back near the exit, you might get lucky. And again, I was just pleasantly surprised. I actually stopped and like was paying attention, but there is a decent amount of seating back there. So you're gonna see that we are gonna be talking about Fantasmic in this uh, video a lot. But one of the great tips and tricks is to take advantage of the Fantasmic dining package. Specifically, if you're a family and you're trying to avoid having to show up to Fantasmic really, really early to get a great view, or if you want to make sure you get a great seat, you might wanna look into the Fantasmic dining package. So. One of the most popular restaurants to do that at is Hollywood and Vine, which is essentially right behind me. One of the reasons why it is one of the most popular restaurants is because it is a character dining experience. The character dining experience actually has special um, character outfits during Halloween and Christmas, which make it popular 
in itself, but also you don't have to do dinner to take advantage of the Fantasmic uh, dining package. You can even do lunch at that restaurant. So some of the other hot, um, some of the other restaurants that are included are going to be the Hollywood Brown Derby. We also have Mama Melrose, 50s Primetime Cafe, and the Sci-Fi Diner. So definitely be sure to go check that out. So another great tip and trick, or something that guests might not realize, is that in my opinion, Hollywood Studios does have some of the best restaurants here in all of Walt Disney World. Now, I really love so many of the restaurants here for so many different things. I would say if you're looking for like the best meal um, bang for your buck, you definitely have to go check out Roundup Rodeo which is the new barbecue place over in Toy Story Land. For ambiance, I would always go with the Sci-Fi Diner. And then just for an all-around great meal, I'm gonna recommend the 50s Primetime Cafe right here. Some of the other restaurants that are really, really popular, of course, gonna be the Hollywood Brown Derby. And I would also say outside of you know that, my opinion is it's better to do sit-down restaurants in Hollywood Studios. I've never been blown away by the quick service meals here. That's just my opinion. I do really like some of the other quick service meals here in Walt Disney World. I'm not saying you can't have a great meal here. I just personally, just again, because these are my tips and tricks, I personally think that there are some hidden gems here from a sit-down restaurant standpoint, and I definitely want you to go and take advantage of that if that's something that interests you. So another important tip and trick that ties into the shows here at Hollywood Studios is that if you're planning to spend an entire day here and really trying to get on to every single, you know, do every single ride, see every single show, you do have to be mindful that the shows don't go all the way until nighttime. So you have to plan around that specifically coming into your day. The latest shows, so here uh, essentially in Indiana Jones, which is right behind me, the latest show of the day is 4.30, which is going on right now. Beauty and the Beast, the latest show is at five o'clock. And then Frozen Sing Along, which is a really, really another popular show here. The latest show is 6.30. And then of course you could see if the park's staying open until eight or nine o'clock, depending on the night you come, you know, you have to be mindful of that. And I would say, make sure you get the shows out of the way and then get those you know, last minute rides in as you get later into the night. But don't forget about Fantasmic, which is a really, really amazing show, which we spoke about earlier in this video. Okay, so another important tip and trick that guests might not realize is that Disney's Hollywood Studios actually has its own Christmas party in Hollywood Studios' Jollywood Nights. So many guests might be familiar with the Magic Kingdom Christmas party, which is Mickey's Very Merry Christmas party, but there is an after hours event at Disney's Hollywood Studios and it is confirmed to be back at the time of the recording of this video for 2024. So this party was introduced in 2023. It didn't have the best reviews right out of the gate, but I think Disney did pull it together as the event went on. And really the highlight of an event like this is going to be the character meet and greets. I'm not saying Mr. Freeze will be one of the character meet and greets, he is just a Disney character. So it's character meet and greets, you can go on some of your favorite rides. There's also a lot of um, snacks and like specialty cocktails throughout the park. So you know, there's that the cocktail element for adults visiting. Um, Disney World that's different from the Magic Kingdom Christmas party. So all in all, you know, just very different, but it is a Christmas party and it is important to understand, especially if you're traveling here during the holidays. But Hollywood Studios also has an after hours event that's typically gonna be, you know, January, February, March, like those sort of months. And what that is, actually, it's really through, um, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm doing this on the fly. It's through at least June, because I went to my first after hours event um, in May of 2024. So Disney does have the after hours or they've had it at Hollywood Studios and that's essentially where there's very, very low crowds. You get to go on some of your favorite rides kind of over and over. Um, you know, this past year, what I would say for the 2024 one, me just giving my honest opinion within the video is it was a little bit more crowded than, you know, um, some of the other after hours events that I went to. So I don't know if it's just because of the increased popularity, but you do have to be mindful of that. You do have to definitely plan to stay in the park till you know, it closes, which can be really, really late at night, but that's how you get the most out of the after hours events, in my opinion. So one of the best tips and tricks to get out of the heat is going to be to visit the Star Wars launch pad or Walt Disney Presents, which is right there. So I actually really love the Walt Disney Presents show. It's essentially the history of you know, Walt Disney himself, how he started the Walt Disney Company and then leading to Disneyland and then coming to Walt Disney World. So it's um, kind of like, a, it has a museum vibes to it in the first part of it where you essentially walk through, you know, um, all these old school like Disney artifacts from, you know, like I said, Walt back in the day, how he started the company. And then after um, the walkthrough, you can actually stay and you can go and uh, stay for essentially a show about Walt's life, 
really. Um, there's also a uh, meet and greet in there. I believe at this point in time it's Ariel, but just keep that in mind. It is one of the best ways to get out of the heat. Also, Star Wars uh, Lunch Bay, I'll also talk about that in the next tip and trick. Okay, so now speaking of Star Wars Launch Bay right here, so not only can you meet some or you could see some of your favorite Star Wars characters in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge here at Hollywood Studios, but Star Wars Launch Bay actually has some of the most popular Star Wars characters for meet and greets here at this location. So not only is it a way, great, great way to get out of the heat, but you can also see um, one of my personal favorites, which is going to be Darth Vader. You can see Chewbacca, and now at this point in time, BB-8. So keep that in mind. Again, it might throw some people off because it's not located in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, but it is kind of over here, kind of, you know, uh, hidden back here. Um, essentially, when you walk down the entry for Hollywood Studios, it's going to be over to your right. All right, so for this next tip and trick, that is going to be that you can see some of your favorite Star Wars characters roaming Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. So one of the most popular ones is going to be the Mandalorian and Baby Yoda, and they are known, I can't guarantee it, but they're known to come out essentially of the exit right there. And then also you'll see uh, Kylo Ren, and then of course stormtroopers kind of roaming around, just to give you an idea of where um, the Mandalorian comes out. Essentially here are the shops, and then the Mandalorian and Baby Yoda kind of are known to come out right over here, right next to it. If you're trying to, to kind of catch them, catch a glimpse, take a photo, be sure to come over here in Galaxy's Edge. So for the next tip and trick, it has to go back to food and we are here at Docking Bay 7. One of my favorite items here in Hollywood Studios is going to be the Ronto Wrap. So the other cool thing and the other important tip and trick to keep in mind is there actually is a vegetarian option, which I know is very, very important. So be sure to check that out or don't let it stop you if you are a vegetarian from coming and trying the Ronto Wrap here in Galaxy's Edge. So I don't know if you guys can see the sign behind me or who that is, but that is Rizzo from the Muppets. And the next tip and trick is essentially in the quick service pizzeria right behind me, which is Pizza Rizzo. So the tip and trick is actually one of my favorite places to have a quick service meal. And this is a catch 22 because it does not have the best pizza. It doesn't hold anything to New York pizza, but on the second floor of Pizza Rizzo, there is essentially like a back seating area where they have really, really like old school, like disco music. Um, be sure, I actually have a full video on my Instagram. We did a pizza or a cookie pizza review up there, but it is a total vibe. It's a completely not what you would expect in the middle of Walt Disney World. It's kind of a hidden gem. So it's in Pizza Rizzo on the second floor and just look for essentially when you come up the stairs, just kind of walk straight and you'll hear the music and you'll see the spinning strobe lights and you can thank me later. Okay, so this next tip and trick is really for my adults visiting or really you know, if you're trying to just stop and have a snack, if you're into pretzels or a charcuterie board, come to the uh, Baseline Tap House right behind here. The tip and trick inside the tip and trick is they actually have um, the mango beer here. Where I actually discovered this out in uh, Disneyland in Disney's California Adventure in California. And surprisingly, to my delight, they do have it here as well, but they have a bunch of really, really good beers on tap. And all in all, honestly, it's just one of my favorite places in all of Walt Disney World. So for the next tip and trick, it's going to be for Oga's, which is essentially the very, very popular Star Wars bar here in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. So the tip and trick would be, even if you don't get a reservation, you know, within the 60 day window, continuously check and see if something might open up. Also, when you get here to the parks, there is a way to join a wait list virtually on the My Disney Experience app. We do have a full video on that on our YouTube channel, but essentially you can check you know, reservations for today and if there's a possibility to join a wait list, it will say you know, join wait list or you do have to be like, kind of close to the bar, but just keep that in mind. Don't give up hope if you didn't get the reservation right away. There's still a chance to come and check out Olga's here in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. So for this next tip and trick, I would say be mindful that there is a essentially uh, lightsaber building uh, store here and then also a Droid Depot. So it's Savi's uh, lightsaber and then the Droid Depot. What the real tip and trick is, is definitely be sure to make your reservations well in advance, but also you might miss them once you get here to Galaxy's Edge. Everything in Galaxy's Edge is really themed on brand. And you know, there's not like regular signs that you might be used to. This is the Droid Depot right behind me. So if you don't know what to look out for, you might just miss it. So this next tip and trick is for guests who do upgrade and get the Disney Magic Band Plus, and that is essentially you can participate in the Bounty Hunter game here in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, and you could see some guests are kind of uh, participating in it behind me. It's a really, really fun, like, interactive game. If you're coming specifically for Star Wars and you're really trying to, like, get the most out of your day outside of, you know, the, um, 
the two main rides here in the park, then that's a great way to kind of just extend it. And really, if you have Star Wars fans, to really you know allow them to really get into just the magic, the atmosphere here in Galaxy's Edge. And if you're trying to figure out if the Disney Magic Band Plus is worth it, I'm plugging a lot of my videos, and we do have a video on that to try to figure out if the Magic Band Plus is worth it. And we do have someone from a far galaxy far, far away right behind me talking to some families. Okay, so the last tip and trick at this point in time, and I'm not going to jump entirely into the brand new multi-pass system here in Walt Disney World, because as of the time of the recording of this video anyway, it's actually not released just yet. I do have a lot of other videos coming out regarding the multi-pass and the new essentially pay to skip the line service here in Walt Disney World. So if you have not already done so, just be sure to subscribe to my channel so you get the latest Disney World tips and tricks as I release those videos. But what I would say is when the new system does come out, to try to prioritize which rides you do want to choose, essentially to try to skip the line using the new multi-pass system here in Walt Disney World, based on the average wait times, here is the list that I would essentially target. So we do have Slinky Dog Dash at number one with an average wait time of 90 minutes. We have Rock and Roller Coaster with an average wait time of 83 minutes. We have Rise the Resistance with an average wait time of 79 minutes. That will be the individual multi-pass, the previous individual lightning lane. We have Twilight Zone Tower of Terror with an average wait time of 59 minutes. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, average wait time of 55 minutes. Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run, average wait time of 55 minutes. Toy Story Mania, average wait time of 53 minutes. From most important down, again, Slinky Dog Dash, Rock and Roller Coaster, Star Wars Rise of the Resistance, Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run, Toy Story Mania, it's important to note that Rock and Roller Coaster was um, down for refurbishment for a good port part of 2024. So I do think uh, Rise of the Resistance will eventually retake that spot. But that is based on 2024 wait time data. I did use Q times to come up with this list just because I always like to let you guys know so you can go and look at this data yourself. But that is essentially the last tip and trick. Those are the rides I would prioritize if you're trying to do the Skip the Line service. But that is the list, everyone. Those are essentially over 20 of the best tips and tricks for your day here at Disney's Hollywood Studios. I really, really hope that you found this video helpful. And if you are in the process of planning a Walt Disney World trip, a Disneyland trip, or a Disney Cruise Line vacation, we can help you out with all of those. Just be sure to go check out the Park Prodigy. Com. But I think that's all the time we have for today. Oh, actually, no, wait. I do have a special promo code you can go use on our website. I almost forgot as a thank you for sticking around till the end. That promo code is going to be YouTube25 to save an extra $25 off some discounted theme park tickets or a Disney World vacation package, whatever your heart desires. But I think that's all the time we have for today. Now, thank you guys again so, so much for checking out this video. And until next time, I will talk to you soon.